favorite things. And then I don't feel so bad. Let's talk about my favorite games. We've almost finished the can of game fuel. We're doing good. Welcome back to Let's Talk About My Favorite Games. My name is Liz Fage. Y'all are the Fage fam. And you might be able to guess what we're talking about from all of the merchandise on my wall, such as my Gambit jersey, my Zavala Funko Pop, my Destiny Comics collection, my ghost figurine, my commemorative K6 ramen mug, and many more. I don't have a problem. Destiny 2 is absolutely one of my sole favorite games. I pre-ordered the game and have been playing since the beta. I really cannot express how magical it was to run through that beta strike, sniping off scions with my sunshot. People often ask me to describe what Destiny is, and the canned response I've come up with is, um, it's about being a magical cowboy who fights aliens. And what more could you want? Game Fuel's dead. Long live the- There was so much left in there. Well, anyway, I've stained my shirt with Game Fuel. Time for daddy to have a San Pellegrino. Things are good here. Destiny 2 is absolutely one of my sole favorite games. Some of my best memories have been long nights spent playing raids or strikes with my friends. And I've realized that's not only because of the wonderful community that surrounds this game, it's because of good game design. But I'll get to that. One of my favorite things about Destiny is its sound design. Every species, weapon, and vehicle has a sound that is obsessively produced. The environmental design is extraordinary too, and sometimes I find myself logging on just to drive around the dirt tracks of Earth or explore Nessus, my favorite planet. There's something so calming about the bright red foliage, and it's also home to my favorite NPC, Failsafe, the artificial intelligence of a mammoth colony ship that crash landed on Nessus centuries ago. Did you know that I can now predict your success with 84% confidence? This is because you are very successful, and I am very confident. When I get tired of Nessus, I might take a trip to Titan and watch the roiling waves strike up against the Arcology, an old human colony that has now fallen into decrepitude. Destiny, like most modern MMORPGs, is full of vibrant stories. Little tidbits are tucked away under lore tabs of ships, weapons, and sparrows. From these, as well as conversations with NPCs, you can learn a lot about the world. It also has a ton of queer representation! Many of the main protagonists are in happy queer relationships and their partners aren't even dead. Why do we gotta have so many dead gays? Rip in peace, Ariana 3 and Wei Ning. Some of the most notable queer characters in the game are Anna Bray, whose partner works at Owl Sector and helps her do research. There's Hawthorne, who's bi and often has old women try to set her up with her granddaughters. And there's also Devrim K, who misses his partner Mark and Mark sometimes sends him tea. Get it? Because he's British and he likes tea? Devrim K is also the first canon gay NPC in Destiny that you could actually walk up to and talk to, which is pretty cool. But what makes Destiny 2 so exciting is how well it handles a theory called Bartle's Taxonomy of Player Types. Now, Dr. Richard Bartle, an English doctor and game designer, coined this term in his seminal essay, Hearts, Clubs, Diamonds, and Spades, Players Who Suit Muds. Every single home stuck in the audience just died, and I'm sorry for that. For those of you not born in the 80s, a mud is a multi-user dungeon. Picture a text adventure version of World of Warcraft. It's kind of amazing that this theory still holds up to like modern games. It's like Babe Ruth making his famous called shot, except he didn't have a bat. He had like a tree branch that would eventually become a bat. And he's still like hitting the ball. Is that how you hold a baseball? Is it? So the four player types. Let's start with diamonds. These people Bartle called achievers because they were always trying to reach lofty goals or find treasure, like diamonds. Creeper. Oh. Destiny has plenty of goals. In fact, there's an entire in-game page devoted to different achievements called the Triumphs page. As far as tangible rewards go, there are hundreds of weapons and armor pieces that can only be obtained by completing high-level activities like raids and strikes. We'll get back to those later. 
Next come the spades or the explorers because they're always trying to like dig up secrets. Destiny is filled with obscure puzzles, such as this infuriating wall in the last wish raid, which the Destiny community still hasn't solved yet. Because there are four septillion possible permutations. What the frick, Bungie? <sighs> we'll get there. That's not a joke though. Like, there's actually four septillion different possibilities. Okay, now for the delightful clubs or the killers, because you know, they... <laughs> These are players who like to beat up other players, essentially. Destiny has a ton of outlets for this, like Crucible, which is a player versus player game mode, Trials, a hyper-competitive PvP mode, and Gambit, which is player versus player versus environment. You can actually compete how good you are at killing things other than people. That's pretty cool. My favorite players are the hearts or socializers, which is most of us. We're the people who play games to hang out with our friends and make new ones. Destiny is amazing at accommodating and forcing players to become socializers. For one, there is an entire emote system, so you can interact with complete strangers in a safe and fun way. We will return to socialization, but first let's talk about how all these suits relate to game development. Bartle posits that these players interact on two axes, player and world, and acting and interacting. For instance, killers are acting on players and explorers are interacting with the world. Bartle posited that for a game to be successful, these player groups had to be kept in balance. That's why I listed out all of those different game activities for you. Destiny works so well because all the player types have something to do. So this leads me to the second part of the video. How has Destiny allowed me to make so many amazing friends? Well, Spry Fox's Daniel Cook has some pretty good ideas about how games can be developed to help people form meaningful relationships. I'm borrowing a lot of assets from his GDC talk. If you're interested in any of this, I highly encourage you to check it out down below. He starts by talking about the levels of natural friendships. Basically, when we're around other people enough, we discover we have similarities, we begin to enjoy each other's company, and then we begin to confide in one another. So how do game developers mirror this process? Well, it has to do with giving players both the opportunity and the incentive to interact. Destiny does this in a rather inelegant way, but it works for me. Many events in the game require a certain number of players to accomplish. Strikes, which are basically difficult story missions, require three people to complete. Most of these events are match-made, meaning you're assigned random fire team members. But for things like Nightfalls, which are incredibly difficult strikes, you must already be in a fire team of three to access them. The same is true for raids, which are six-person events that take hours to complete. Cook calls this hard co-op, which is forcing players to collaborate to meet a goal. All of these other levels are represented in Destiny. Story missions are solitary play, parallel play occurs in the open world, ambient co-op occurs in things like public events, and soft co-op occurs in things like strikes and other collaborative game modes. Now why I call hard co-op inelegant is because it requires people to go outside of the game to find people to play with. Most Destiny players frequent Discord servers or forums specifically devoted to finding people to play with. High level events can be particularly rough for people with social anxiety because it requires spending hours at a time with five other people you hardly know. Yikes. But even so, I'm incredibly thankful for these raids. Because of this hard co-op, I've met my normal raid group, including Pent, Captain Sway, and Riley Icefang. Hello, y'all, if you're watching. I've also become better friends with people from my real life, like my bro Stars, hello Lucas, and my friends from back home. I love Destiny. It's vibrant worlds, it's smooth gunplay, and it's deep lore. But the real reason I love Destiny so much is because of all the wonderful friends I've made through the game. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Liz Phage, y'all are the Phage fam, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye bye